Hey guys, it is Mr. Decker here once again, and we are in the Computer Science Discoveries Unit 3, uh, Animation and Games. We are moving right along. We have made it all the way to Lesson 21, and this is the first game we're making in this unit, so that's pretty exciting. This uh, game that we're going to make is a side-scroller. It's a mini-project. And I'm going to make my own, and I've already loaded a few of my own uh, utilities. So I've, I've added my own sprites. I've added uh, my background already just for the sake of time on this video. And I'll go over that with you as well to make sure that you understand how that works. But uh, here's a sample game. This is very similar to what you'll be making. Although you want to be creative and you want to have fun with this, so you'll probably do something more than just make this simple frog game. Uh, we're going to make basically the same kind of thing. However, uh, the way this works is that mushroom is decreasing the health, as you can see up there, every time it hits me. It also changes rotation. It tilts when you hit it. It's making my health go down, and then every time I catch a fly by hitting up, and that's the only way I can make him move. He can't double jump, which is important uh, for later. And then when you lose all of your health, you get a game over. So I only have two health left, so I better be careful. I mean, my score is 20, so every time I collect a fly... My score goes up, and you can see that up here. And now I'm going to get a game over. Yep. All right. So let's finish and continue. That puts us on to Bubble 2. And on Bubble 2, you're supposed to draw your background. So the sample game had a simple background of a blue sky, a white oval cloud, and a brown ground. You can choose to make your background as simple or as complicated as you want. Now for this project, it's going to be better if you create your own background instead of going to the animation tab and using a sprite background. For this project in particular, it's just going to be better trust. All right, so use the drawing blocks, go into your drawing drawer and draw your background. It's important that you have a few things there, uh, especially a ground. Now, I'm going to run mine just to show it to you as I explain my background. So, uh, remember that you can always go to HTML color names in a separate tab. To get there, all you do is type in literally HTML color names. And the first link that shows up is this W3Schools link. And then from there, you can see all of these different colors you can use as long as you type in the name correctly inside your background or fill blocks, then that will work for you. And those are colors that are options for you. Uh, so let's look at the code here. So yours will look different automatically because this is not filled in for you. I've already done this for the sake of time on, on the video once again. So we've got background, dark slate blue. This is the dark slate blue background. And then fill maroon, a rectangle at 0, 350. That's the x value, y value. And then here are the width and heights of that rectangle. So the width, 400, is what makes it go from one side to the other and span the entire display area. And then 200 is its height. Uh, so, you, so you get that correct. Uh, 0, x, 350, y. 400 and 200. And then right here, I have a no stroke for my tomato moon up here. I use the tomato color. That's what that looks like. And then here's the ellipse location. So 198x, 45y, and then 60, 60 for my width and height on that moon. And then still blue is the color of these two uh, ellipses here that are making these oval clouds for me. This first one is 125x, 100y, 250 width, and 100 height. So notice that my width is uh, pretty wide there, 250. 
Uh, and then its height is smaller than its width by more than double to make it look more like a long sort of sh cloud shape. And then the this ellipse right here, 300x, 75y, 200 width, 72 height. So it's a little bit smaller than this one. So that's just how that is appearing. The health, I haven't done anything with this text. That's down here. You can see fill black, text size 20, text health at 280x, 30y. And then uh, this value right here is tied to a variable up at the top that's established on line 8. And that's how that works. All right. So I'm going to move on to bubble three, and let's get started coding this. But again, make sure your background has as many features as you want it to. Get creative, use funky colors if you want to, and just keep in mind that your ground uh, is very important. If you have nothing back here, you at minimum need to have a ground. So let's finish and continue. All right, creating our sprites. Next, create the sprites you will use in your program. You'll need a player. Uh, in the sample game, that was the frog. A target in the sample game, that was a fly. And an obstacle in the sample game, that was a mushroom. You can change the sprite animations to anything you want. And I have gone ahead and done that. So it says, go to the animations tab and make sure that you have the three images you want. The frog, mushroom, and fly are already there but you can use whatever images you want. Find the code comment, game setup, and then you'll create your sprites, the player, the target, and the obstacle. And then you're going to be setting up each one to the animation you choose for it. But on my animation tab, I have a player, and so it's me as an astronaut, and so you can see that I've got glasses on, I have red hair, I'm decked out in my astronaut gear. And then down here, this guy is my obstacle, and this little cute guy is my uh, target. So this is what I'll collect for points, and this is what I'm trying to avoid. So back to the code. Those are the three sprites that I've already added. And I just I went to the internet and found this, and I made sure that it doesn't have a uh, background on it. If it had, I would have already uh, use remove.bg to get rid of it. And then uh, we need to scale these because they'll all show up at random sizes. So let's go ahead and get our sprites onto the screen. We'll start with uh, my player sprite. I'm going to set the animation to player, run, and see he's huge. I need him to be a lot smaller than that, so let's make him smaller. And the size of things are going to be very important because we're going to be using collision detection on this game, and the bigger things are, the harder you're making it. So player.scale, let's give him a scale of 0.4 maybe. Reset run. All right. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to move him down here. So let's give him a 92x, 295y. See where that puts him. Oh, I need to bring him down some more. So let's try to increase the y value. See if we can get his feet onto the ground. Let's try 315. All right, that works for me. And then let's see. Let's actually make him a little bit bigger. And it might mean that our numbers are going to change a little bit. I'm going to move him. Actually, that's good. I like where he is now. All right. So 92, 315. 
scale of 0 0.5, making him half of his original size. And then next I'm going to get my obstacle on the screen. And every time you add a sprite, you need to remember to set the animation. So let's get him showing up. Oh, he's ginormous, so we definitely need to change his scale. Let's try 0 0.2 for him since he's so big. That should work. And then I'm going to bring him down on Y to like 344. All right. Uh, let's take bring him up a little bit. Let's try a 320. That looks pretty good. And then let's get our target sprite that gives us points on the screen. And he's also ginormous. And I'm actually going to make him a little bit smaller than my obstacle, even. So let's set the target scale. 0 0.1, see what that looks like. That's good. And we will leave him up there for now. All right, let's see. Set the starting velocity x. Place them where you want them to be, on or off the screen. So I'm going to set his x. 370, 370, 365 or so for the obstacle. And we'll go ahead and leave him there. So reset run. All right, I like where he is. I like where everything is at the moment. Let's see. Test your program. Start. Set the starting velocity x of the target and the obstacle. Get them moving across the screen. So, starting velocity x for the obstacle. Let's set it to three. And for the target velocity x, oh, it needs to be negative three. My bad. Otherwise, it's not going to go the right direction. Velocity x again for our target. We'll make that the same. Let's make sure those are moving. Yes, sir, e Bob. They are a moving. All right. Test the program. Your player should be on the screen, and the target and obstacle should start off screen and move across the screen from right to left. Oh, okay. So I need to get them at like 450. Oh, whoops, control Z, 450 and 450, just to get them off the screen. And there they are, I'm moving. Perfect, all right. Moving right to left, and the obstacle and target sprite should always move at the same speed. You only need to set a velocity for each sprite one time, and you can do this outside the draw loop. That's what we did here and right here. Make sure you give it a negative value, otherwise it's going to move right and you'll never actually see your sprite if you start them off the screen. Let's finish there. And that's gonna put us onto bubble four. And on bubble four, player controls. So the up arrow should make the player jump. There are three parts to jumping. You'll jump up when a key is pressed, go down when you're high enough, and don't fall through the ground. We're gonna add a code comment or sorry, find the code comment jumping. So let's go find jumping. Here's jumping on line 43. It's probably, it might be on a different line for yours based on how many background blocks you have up here, you know, how you uh, have already set up your player sprite, your obstacle and your target and so on. But anyway, let's go down to where we see jumping. And let's give us some, give ourselves some more room to work. So uh, read the three comments in that section. If the player has reached the ground, stop moving down. If the player presses the up arrow, start moving up. And if the player reaches the top of the jump, start moving down.
All right. So we're going to add a con some conditionals here. Uh, add a conditional that checks whether the player has pressed the up key. So let's go to the control drawer. Uh, we're going to put that right here. If the player presses up the up arrow, start moving up. And let's see, checking to see if we've hit the up key. So world drawer, key down. Up. If the up key is pressed, use the velocity Y property to start the player frog sprite moving up. Okay, so velocity Y player sprite moving up. And to move up, we need to give that a negative value. So let's run it up. And then he just keeps it going up. All right, that's working. It does move up. Whoop. Test your code to see where this sprite goes up when you press the up arrow. We just did that. And then added, add a conditional that uses the sprite's Y property to check whether it is high enough. All right, so when it hits the top of the jump, that's here. So control. Uh, if it is far enough up the screen, add code to make the sprite move back down the screen. Okay, so we need a less than operator. And it's going to be player.y. And then less than, let's see, let's try 200. And then we'll make him go back down. Sprites, velocity y. Player to dot velocity y gets four. So we'll have come back down at the same speed he goes up. And let's test that. Okay. So let's do a bigger jump. Let's try 250. Oh, sorry. I went in reverse. That made it an even smaller jump. Let's try like 125. Yeah, there we go. OK. If it is far enough up the screen, add code to make the sprite move back down. That's good. That's working. And we tested it. And now we're going to add a conditional to check whether the sprite is low enough on the screen to be on the ground. OK, to make it stop moving down, add code to stop the sprite. OK, so we'll say control drawer, an if statement here. And let's see. Math, it's going to be greater than this time, I think. And it's going to be player.y again. And if it's greater than, I don't know, let's try 300, then the velocity is going to be 0. All right, run it. OK. All right, for some reason, I'm having to hit it twice. Let's see, make sure it's registering my button push. I'm just hitting the up key to test this out over and over again, make sure it's working. And 300 apparently was the right number. Run. All right, so for some reason, I'm having to hit up three times at the beginning. So if player is greater than 300, then player velocity y is 0. Um, let's see, where does he start? 315. So let's start him at 
299 run let's see okay that's working better good okay so you're starting Y location for your player has to be at least one pixel less on Y than where you set him to stop moving down on this conditional statement. So I use 299 and 300 for mine. Yours might be a little different. And that's working pretty good. All right. Let's test to make sure the sprite does not go through the ground at the end of the jump. And he does not, so he's good. So finish. Let's head to the next bubble, bubble five. All right, the obstacle mushroom and the target fly I need to loop back to the right of the screen once they get too far. So find the code that comment that says looping. Let's find that. Here's looping. And we're going to be adding a conditional that uses the object sprites or the ob obstacle sprites x property to check whether it has moved off the screen. Okay, if it has moved off the screen, use its x property to put it back to the right side of the screen. All right, test your code to see whether the obstacle is looping. So, if the obstacle has gone off the left hand side of the screen, move it to the right hand side. All right, so sprites, or sorry, control. It's an if statement. Uh, this is for the obstacle, so sprites, or sorry, world drawer, no, math drawer, goodness gracious. So in the math drawer, if it's less than, because it's moving to the left, if sprite.x, and it's going to be obstacle.x, is less than, uh, let's say, negative 30, so that's a little bit off the screen. If it's less than negative 30, then sprite.x obstacle.x becomes 450 again. All right. Uh, let's see if it's looping from just that amount of code. So it gets over here. All right, we're looping. Sweet. If it has moved off the screen, okay, so we got to do the same thing for the target now. So we'll leave that down here. And we know that it's simple math now, less than. This time it's target.x and negative 30 for, let's do negative 15 for the target. And sprites, sprite.x, it's going to be target.x gets 450. Reset run. Let's make sure both of them are looping. All right, very good. Let's see. That appears to be working pretty great so far. We're not we're looping. All right, bubble six. Sprite interactions. In the sample game, the obstacle, the mushroom, rotated and the health decreased when the player frog touched it. The score increased and the target fly moved back to the right of the screen when the player frog touched it. So do this. Find the code comment sprite interactions. So we'll find sprite interactions. Did I miss it? Where is it? Sprite interactions. There it is, sprite interactions. And then create a conditional that checks whether the sprite, player sprite is touching the obstacle sprite. And if they are touching, decrease the health and change the obstacle sprite in some way. All right. So... I think this is just going to be a simple if statement. 
And we're checking if the player touches the obstacle. So if sprite is touching, and it's going to be if player is touching obstacle, if they are touching, decrease the health and change the obstacle sprite in some way. All right, so we need to decrease the health. So we're going to go into the variables drawer and grab assigning the variable. Make sure you don't grab var x or var x semicolon. It's just x gets. So make sure you're paying attention to that. So health, I believe, is the name of the health variable. No capitalization. Health gets um, math drawer minus. We're decreasing the health. So health minus. One, run it. Let's make sure that's happening. We should see the health go down up here. Uh, because my, that's hard to see. So where is it drawing health? Right here. I'm going to make that white right there above the text size and health to make that show up a lot better. There we go. That looks way, way better. Now we can see that going down really nicely. All right. So my health goes down. Let's try 0 0.5, make that a little bit easier. Just so, and so you can see that as well. That'll go down to 70 with one full hit. Then 40. All right, I like that. We'll use 0 0.5. And if they are touching, decrease the health and change the obstacle sprite in some way. So we're going to change the obstacle sprite in some fashion. If the player is touching, let's duplicate him. Obstacle 2. And then I'm just going to make him look more menacing. Let's draw some angry eyebrows on this guy. There we go, I'm gonna fill this in. So we'll change the sprite animation. Given, giving him these angry eyebrows. Let's extend that a little bit. I am not by any means the world's best artist. So just bear with me on my terrible artwork. If you don't care about this part of the video, you can always skip ahead. Oop. Um, sure, angry guy. Pull that down a little further. There we go. And then a little bit wider still. Make sure that shows up really well. Let's straighten that out. I'm just kind of peeking over at what it looks like over here to make sure it's what I want. Let's make this a little wider. There we go. And then we can, in addition to that, make him look a little bit different. So sprites, set animation of the obstacle to obstacle two. Make sure that's working. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Angry eyebrows show up nicely. Uh, let's see if, if when he loops back around, those are still there. All right, so now if... Obstacle is less than negative 30, then we're going to change his animation back to the original look. 
Let's make sure that works. Yep, sweet. Well, let's run that one more time. I just want to make sure it's lo it loops at least twice. Okay, so that's working. It's working. Awesome. Okay. And then we need to check and see. Let's see. What is it? What else does it want us to do? Check. All right. I need to make this bigger so I can read. Uh, run the program test your code. We did. The health and the obstacle changed in some way. Uh, I'm also going to tilt him. So when player is touching, let's tilt him by using sprite.rotation. Obstacle.rotation, we'll, we'll do, we'll make him kind of aggressive, negative 45. So when, when we run that, he should tilt towards me. Yeah, there we go. And then back down here, where he gets off the screen. We're going to set his rotation back to zero. Make sure that's working. He tilts, and he should be normal now. Yep. OK. Let's finish right there. Oh, wait, no, I got to make the target work. So let's go up to the target area right here. If the player touches the target, the score goes up and the target resets. So let's make the score go up. Control drawer, if sprite is touching. So if player is touching target, then variables, make sure you grab that one. Then score gets math score plus one. So let's run that. And hmm, if they are touching increase the score and move the target back to the right of the screen. Okay. Sprites, sprite.x, target.x gets 450 again. So let's make sure that's working. We'll jump up and get him. There we go. And yep, he's a moving. Just lost some health there. I, it's hard to tell if it, if the score is going up because I can't see a score. Um, you may want to use watchers to keep track of your score and health. I'm, we'll we'll work on this later. Create a conditional. Run the program. If they are touching, increase score. Move the target. Okay, we got it. So on bubble seven. We're finishing out the scoreboard. Right now, the health is displayed, but the score is not. Do this. Find the code comment scoreboard. I think that's towards the bottom, actually. So scoreboard is down here. Let's see. Add a scoreboard and health meter. So we have the health here. Run the program to test your code. Uh, add code to create a scoreboard. Run the program to test your code. Uh, okay, so we're going to add, I'm going to just control C all of this code. Or actually, I don't need to control C all of that. I'm going to control C just this part, control C, and then put control V here. And this is going to say score. And I'm going to change health to score. And then we've got to give this new locations because otherwise, if we run it right now, it's just writing that on top of, of itself. 
So let's move this over here. I'm gonna leave 30 as the Y but the X is gonna to change to, let's say 15. All right, now we've got to get the actual score score of it showing up. So let's see if it shows up nicely at 75 X. That looks pretty good. So there's my score. And that is increasing each time. Okay. All right. So now my game's pretty much working. I might need to change some things to get it working exactly the way I want it to. I'm going to skip that one, try to time that so I don't get damaged too bad. Whew. All right, might need to make him smaller. Oh, and there's my game over screen. So that's working automatically, I guess, because right here we have if health is less than zero. All right, let's finish and continue to bubble eight. So our scoreboard's working. All right, now that you've added in all your features, it's time to play your game. Play your game a few times to check for bugs. Look over your project guide to make sure you've not missed anything and make any last changes. So I am going to make a few changes. Uh, in particular, I want my score to still show up. On top of that game over background being there. Let's see. So maybe if I just grab all of this and put it in the code again, or actually if I grab all of that and bring it down here, let's see, let's get a game over on purpose. All right, it'll take a second. Um, Hopefully this one knocks me out, gives me the game over. Nope, one more time then. Health down to four. Okay, so score zero. My health is still decreasing. So we're gonna change some of this code inside of this if health is less than zero. I'm actually going to change the sprites velocities or reset them and change their velocity. So obstacle, you get a velocity of zero. Got to expel that, right? And my, oh, velocity Y does not matter one bit for the obstacle. So obstacle, uh, velocity X, zero. And then target velocity x is going to be zero. And we're going to put them off the screen. Control C, Control V, 450. Control C, Control V, 450. That way we're making sure that health is not going to continue to decrease. Uh, and then I want my score to show up on the game over screen and it, we know that it does, but I wanna increase this right here to test it. All right, negative five, score is zero. So let's run it and try to play the game a little bit. All right, so score is there. I'm gonna change my damage. Where was my damage? Oh, right here. That's gonna be, let's change it back to one. Reset run. Selecting that, and I'm actually going to start giving the 
target sprite or random velocity. So every time it resets, down here when it's looping, target velocity y, random number, and I think its original velocity was, let's see, target velocity negative three. So we'll stick with negative three as the minimum. And we'll go all the way up to like negative eight. So let's run and test that. Make sure its velocity is changing. And it isn't for some reason. Hmm. Oh, also I can, I didn't realize I can double jump so I can totally cheese this game. All right, let's fix the double jumping. All right, we're gonna fix the double jump now. Now that I discovered that's a thing. All right, so we're gonna have to get a little bit complex here. So I'm gonna grab this, nest this in here. Hit this plus right here and pull that here. All right, so now we're asking if player.y is greater than 300 and if key down up, player velocity y gets negative four or else it's zero. That should prevent that double jump cheese. Oh, but now, now we're stuck. Oh, look what I did. Uh, dang. I just noticed another error that I made. So show text, velocity x, show blocks, reset run. Now he won't jump at all. So I'm going to have to fix that. But the velocity is now working for my target. All right, so let's fix this. So let's see. 300. Let's do 300 here and 299 here. Let's see if that fixes it. Now he's jumping, and now I can't double jump. Perfect. All right. Ooh, I also need his velo the velocity to change for my target. So I'm going to control C that line where I said target dot velocity X gets a random number. I'm going to put that in the is touching player is touching target as well. Um, gosh, I'm going to have to move this up. Player is touching target, control V, run. So now it should change its velocity when I catch him also. Yes, good. All right. Sweet. It's hard to jump over him without hitting him at all. So I might need to change his size. Yep. Or animation. What are the... Okay. So the hitboxes should be right. However... I'm thinking I need to make him smaller. So scale for my obstacle 0 0.15. 
run. All right, so, oof. Now jumping over him almost completely. Let's see if we can time it right. Nope. Come on, no tilt, no tilt. There we go. All right, it is difficult to jump over him, which I want it to be hard. And... I think I want, so every time I touch the target, I want him to come back at a, at a random Y location, sprite.y, target.y, random number. Uh, he's always at what? 200Y, so we'll change that and give that a range from 150 to 300. And then I'm gonna control C that, and I'm also gonna put that in for, for the looping down here. V. Let's run this again. Up arrow to jump over. All right, cool. So now he's at different heights each time he reappears. All right, so far I'm really liking this. It's working pretty good. I think I'm about to get my game over. Yep, score is 15. Health is negative one. Let's fix that health so that um, it always reads out a zero on that. Oh, zero, let's make sure that health remains at zero. So let's kind of cheese this, make my health go down a lot faster. Oh, it should just be two contacts then. Yep, score zero, health zero. Oh, okay, so now I need to fix this. So now new math, less than or equal to. Let's try it again. Because my game over screen didn't appear. Good. All right. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That's what we want. So I'm going to finally, to end this video, play the full finished game. Man, I already messed it up. Let's try to time these jumps right. Oh, it didn't take too much damage, though. Man, I want to turn on my set colliders because I feel like I'm not really touching him. Uh, Sprite.debug. Player. True. Back. And it's going to be C, Control V. C, control V, just checking the collision. Okay. So, yeah, you can see now how that's hitting. Oh, just, just over. So, if I changed him to a circle, can I do that? Uh, set collider, yep. Changed all of them to circles. Let's see if that improves anything. Let's 
Since everything I'm using is circular, it makes sense, right? Let's see what it looks like now and how it plays. Oh yeah, that's better. Much better. Now I can dodge him properly. So now it's a little easier. I think the hardest thing about this, uh, let's make these faults now so that those aren't showing up anymore. I don't want my user to see the collision detection. I want them to just be able to enjoy the game. Hold on just a second, getting a phone call. And we're back. So uh, like I was saying, I think the most complicated part of this really is getting the jump to work correctly so that it can't be cheesed by jumping, double jumping, triple jumping, quadruple jumping, and jumping forever. And that's as simple as making sure your value right here on Y is a bigger number by at least one pixel than your value right here. And then of course, nesting your if key down up inside that if player dot Y is greater than 299 or whatever value you came up with. And then your speed for your velocity Y to make him go up and then changing his velocity to zero when uh, this is true, but this is not. So ultimately, things are working here, and I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm glad I changed the colliders to circles for sure. All right, I'm going to finish right there. That's it from me. I hope you have fun making your side scrolling game. It's pretty simple, but it it can end up becoming a fairly complex uh, game at 123 lines of code for me. I'm curious how many lines of code you have. If uh, you want to comment on how many lines of code you ended up with, that would be cool for me to see. Uh, and others to see as well. Anyway, hope you has had as much fun as I did. I'll see you next time for Lesson 22.